in 2008 the excellent video film Defiance was produced about a group of partisans in Belarusia during World War II who survived in the woods in rough Russian winters in the snow and cold from 1941 till 1945. And last week I watched it with my two sons, 11 and 13 years old, to drag him, to drag him a bit away from the usual Hollywood superhero psyop indoctrination and show them the true face of history through this authentic film. And they liked it and made them realize some things. Afterwards I dug a bit on the internet about the Bielski brothers, the film's main characters, and found Zeus Bielski's son and his YouTube channel Jay Belsky, who had uploaded an interview with his father Zeus only two weeks before. So, I watched the film at the exact right moment. So I asked him if I could just copy five minutes of the interview and he said, sure. So if you punch Zeus interview, that's Z-U-S, in YouTube, it will pop out. <coughs> What Nick? Were you were you proud of your Jewishness? Did you question why am I Jewish? Why do I have to put up? Why didn't you take the easy way out? The easy way out? I didn't think about it. And uh, that's number one. Number two, I'm not a religious Jew, but I'm still Jewish. When I was, uh, we just made up our mind. I was not the only one. I got another brother, brothers, which. I don't know by themselves if everyone would would be survived by individual to go with Shiksas. Who the hell got in their mind and Shiksas? We got in mind to fight and to take it out Jews to fight the Germans. If my brother was fighting two years was for that to take it out all kind of uh, people and uh, to survive. I wasn't against this. I was only against to stay together with children and old people. Okay, can we'll we get, get to that later? Yeah, we'll get to okay. Later. Did you yeah. have any dealings with the Judenreiter? With the Judenreiter? I'll tell you what I got. With the Judenreiter, I did have before we were already in the woods. The word he's talking about is Judenrat, that means uh, the Jewish Council. It's hard to understand. That's. Uh, uh, Yiddish. In the forest, right. me and my other brother, I saw it. And they called two of my brothers, Yango and Ebrahim. The first time they didn't take him, the Germans, when they come to arrest us, me and my brother, I saw it. So they were sure they wouldn't touch it. The other two brothers, they're not communists and they're not uh, partisans. So they were sitting at home, which you cannot blame it. They saw it, the fact, the Germans were, and they didn't uh, touch them. Mm -hmm. When they come up, and they called Vitruvia also, they didn't touch him in the first time, the Germans. Mm -hmm. They come up to look specifically for myself, and I saw it, my brother. That's why the two brothers were sitting at home, but didn't, uh, you know, didn't look out for uh, the Germans because they didn't touch me. All of a sudden, a month later, they come up and they arrest the two brothers, Yanko and Abel. This is the answer I'm giving you that I have been in touch with the UNRAT. When they took away the two brothers, they didn't touch my mother. So my mother and the little brother, what I have now, is in here in the States. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ekman knows it. He, with my mother, was going to the, to the city, to Navarra, where they put him in jail for two months. 
You know, sitting there. My mother was going every second day to cry and to try to get me out from the yeah. from jail. One from the Unirat, or two of them, they was asking for 200 rubles of gold. Gold, get them out. Yeah, right. They could get them out. And finally, what happened with the two in jail? Finally, they was, we didn't have no money. So they didn't let them out. Finally, after a couple of months, they made a shooting as well. And they killed about 5,000 people together with my two brothers. They tried to escape already from the trucks, but they did not That's the, That first mass action that was known was December 8, 1941. Right, that's the first one. That was the first massive mm -hmm. killing. Your mother was not in that. Was she? Your mother? The first Shrita? Yeah. She was also. So that's yeah, your brother and the mother. When was it? That's my wife knows. She, December. What? December. I said December 1941. Exactly. That's why she I see. The so we just saw that the Judenrat, or the Jewish Council, the Jewish authorities, were collaborating with the Germans. And they told the um, uh, normal... Jews like here, Mr. Zeus Bielski, just to obey the Germans and, you know, to be slaughtered like a lamp in the slaughterhouse. So this great guy here, he just thought for himself. So the Junrat, they were acting against their own people, actually. And they are probably true pharaohs, as these pharaohs are everywhere, in all peoples, within. Uh, giving the orders, uh, sitting at key positions like Judenrat and, and the Jewish Council, our governments, they're everywhere, including these people here, the, uh, the pharaohs, the pharaohistocracy. And this is why the people didn't defend themselves, because they thought trusting their own people, which probably were not. But he did the right thing, this bloke here. He did the very right thing. He just acted and saved people without believing the authorities, his own Jewish authorities, his own religious people. He said, well, I'm going to act for myself and I'm going to save people. And that's a good thing. I respect this man and his brothers. So it was not only the Germans he had to fight, but also a very hard psychological fight against his own authorities, the enemy within. So it was a double fight, or a triple fight, against the religion as well. So that was a hard fight. Well, it was probably the hardest fight to get into the real fight with the Germans. So you have to be real strong in your mind. As we can see, this man is, or was. So he died in 1995. And his brother, his brother Tuvia, he died in 1987. And Asoil in 1945, in the war. So also here in this story, it's another example that we shouldn't believe and follow our religious leaders and don't follow the political leaders and our presidents, in this case the, the Jewish Council or Junrat. Now, the main aspect I find interesting in how the Bielskis broke loose from a religious bondage that paralyzed an entire community and brought them as lambs to the slaughterhouse without any defense. The Bielski brothers were secular non-religious Jews and broke loose from the rabbi's tiles, ties telling everyone that some divine entity called God would save them and protect them from Hitler and that they shouldn't defend themselves and just obey the Nazis and their orders who actually camouflage their true intentions by promising everybody food, a future and just some work under humane conditions in a working camp. Actually, a refined Swiss idea 
who, fin who financed Adolf Hitler from 1923 onwards and gave in fact all the orders to the Nazis as Switzerland and the Nazi Templars of Octagon are the true masters of disguise with a smile to conceal their neutrality swindle until the last shower to take. And it was also the Swiss financial and weapons transactions with the Nazis that prolonged World War II with at least two years and two more hard winters in the forest for the Bielski partisans and the children and the women. So here we can, I showed it in many of my films. It's a very important picture of Mr. Hitler in Zurich in 1923 when the Swiss Nazi Templars financed him with half a million dollars today's worth. And here's the Swiss Nazi general Ulrich Villa who uh, did most of the uh, transactions and the dealings with Mr. Hitler uh, for the as a, a, a delegate as a delegate for the uh, entire Swiss population. Nice, charming, isn't it? Look at it. So these guys are the ones behind it all. And now, 70 years later, we got YouTube and all that. And we shouldn't forget the Bielski brothers and all those other victims and, and of these ones here. It's time to sort it all out. And I'm doing it. Five months, five months old. But when we finish this, yes, right. The first Germans were there for me. They picked up 15 people, Jewish people, uh, on where and in the, was an empty place in the middle of the city. They used to call this a mark, I don't know. It's not a uh, A place of collection. Yeah, a place Not where people used to bring it in stuff in there for sale to buy. Marketplace. Yeah, marketplace, you know, like, like a free market in, the, in America. Right. And the place, they bring it in 50 people. I was standing in the city, not like a Jew, with uh, a yellow star. A yellow star, or just playing like I'm dressed now in a little jacket, Eisenhower jacket. And was looking, they bring it in 10, 10, Ten, 10 people, I was looking like all the Christian people were standing there looking around. Then come up a general with a little truck. They walked out, gave it a shot in the air, and 10 at a time, put 10 Jewish people like this. They shot it, 10. Machine guns. Machine guns. And they killed 50 people in front of my eyes. These 50 people picked. Just by random and random. These people will pick it up in the same city, you know, and see my people are walking around so they pick up Jews. Right. And, and I mean, they're not Jewish leaders of any sort. They're just people they pick no, up. No, people, other people. Mm -hmm. What was your immediate reaction to that? My reaction to that is, was, not to get to the Germans. They should shoot me. But I'll shoot him first. We'll try to kill him first before he tries Why did you get this feeling to share? Here is the feeling when I saw it in front yeah, of my You see, him. ordinarily in Eastern Europe, as I recall, you went to Haida to study. When yeah. a boy, when a non-Jew did something to you, they were told, turn the other face. Why did you get the fighting spirit? Who gave it to you? Did this you have spirit. military experience before the war? I did have. I was in the Russian army for six months six in months. the Russian army when? When? before the German come in, was the, was the Russians in the army, and I was in the army. Yeah. You mean to say when the So the Bielski brothers didn't obey the orders of the Jewish community, the Judenrat leaders and the rabbis, and decided to die fighting. 
Well, they didn't die and even save 1,200 others. So in fact, religion and the rabbis worked for the Nazis against their own people and said, just pray and all will be well and God will be our, our instrument and savior. Which is in fact a blasphemy to assume that we little humans can just push a button by praying and order this God thing to obey our orders and help out. Whereas this very same religion states that we are God's instruments and not the other way around. So in fact the secular Bielski warriors didn't buy the religious dogmatism and without boasting some divine commitment they became the holiest of all while the rest of the praying believers were taken as lambs to the slaughterhouse under the Swiss Templars promise of just one more shower to take.